Gene expression is regulated at four main levels, transcription, RNA processing, translation, and post-translational processing. The major mechanism in prokaryotic regulation of transcription involves operons, which refers to gene clusters that function together in regulation. Genes that code for catabolic or degradative pathways are typically regulated by inducible operon that are off by default and only turns on in the presence of the substrate. An example would be the lac operon that functions in lactose catabolism. On the other hand, anabolic or biosynthetic operons are typically repressible, which means that the genes are on by default and they are only repressed in the presence of the products. An example would be trip operon, which functions in tryptophan biosynthesis. Another mechanism in the regulation of prokaryotic transcription involves site-specific recombination, which is found in the bacteria Salmonella that infects mammalian intestine. Salmonella moves by rotating flagella on its cell surface. They switch between two distinct flagellin proteins through phase variation to evade host immune system. This is achieved by periodic inversion through site-specific recombination. Bacterial transcription is also regulated by the riboswitch RNA, which are structured domains found in untranslated regions at the 5' ends of certain bacterial mRNAs. It serves as a feedback inhibition mechanism that when appropriate ligand binds, riboswitch stabilizes the transcription terminator and aborts transcription. Riboswitch RNA also functions in translational regulation, which will be talked about in a moment. On the other hand, Eukaryotic transcription is regulated by chromatin remodeling, which changes the structure of chromatin to switch between the inactive condensed heterochromatin and the active loose euchromatin. Most eukaryotic promoters are also positively regulated by enhancers for higher eukaryotes and UAS, which stands for upstream activator sequences in yeast. More details about operons, chromatin remodeling, and enhancers UAS system have been covered in my video on transcription. Transcription of immunoglobulin, also known as antibodies, are regulated by VDJ recombination, which increases antibody diversity. Antibodies consist of two heavy and two light polypeptide chains, each containing two regions, the variable region and the constant region. The V in VDJ stands for variable, D stands for diverse segment, and J stands for joining segment. VDJ recombinates the least DNA between a particular V segment and a J segment. The segments are then recombined in many possible ways, producing diverse antibodies. Finally, eukaryotic transcription is subject to hormonal regulation. Lipid-soluble hormones, including steroid hormones and thyroid hormones, diffuses through plasma membrane and interact with intracellular nuclear receptor. Hormone receptor complex binds to highly specific DNA sequences called hormone response elements, abbreviated as HRE, that alters gene expression. On the other hand, water-soluble hormones such as insulin binds to cell surface receptor and activate other proteins in an enzyme cascade. Eventually, some of the products may act as transcription factors such as CAMP response element. More details about hormone classification have been covered in my previous video on chemical signals. Both prokaryotic and eukaryotic RNA processing have been covered in my previous video on RNA processing. To recap, for prokaryotes, mRNA transcription is coupled to translation, therefore there is no RNA processing of mRNA. Prokaryotic RNA and tRNA are derived from a single 30S pre-RNA transcript that undergoes base modifications in RNA cleavage to produce the mature RNA and tRNA. RNA degradation can ensure RNAs don't build up in the cell and direct synthesis of unnecessary proteins. Bacterial RNAs are degraded by RNAs 3, RNAs J, and small RNA, abbreviated as sRNA. On the other hand, eukaryotic mRNA are processed before translation. mRNA processing includes 5' capping, 3' polyadenylation, RNA editing, and RNA splicing. 5' capping and 3' polyadenylation protects the mRNA from degradation. RNA editing involves deamination and uridine insertion and deletion. And RNA splicing removes the non-coding introns from the primary transcript and joins the coding exons to form a continuous sequence. Alternative splicing allows the same genes to encode for more than one kind of polypeptide. Eukaryotic ribosomal RNA processing includes base modification, cleavage, and export which are facilitated by SNOW RNA, 
Eukaryota tRNA processing involves base modification, 3' CCA addition, cleavage, and RNA splicing. Eukaryotic RNA can be degraded by A3' to 5' exoribonuclease, known as exosome, as well as miRNA, which are small single-stranded non-coding RNA molecules that binds and degrades complementary mRNA. This process is known as RNA interference. Prokaryotic regulation of translation includes the stringent response, which is triggered when amino acid concentrations are low, which causes the binding of uncharged tRNAs to ribosomal A site, which in turn triggers the binding of an enzyme called stringent factor, also known as the REL A protein, to the ribosome. When bound to ribosome, stringent factor catalyzes formation of the unusual nucleotide guanosine tetraphosphate, abbreviated as PPGPP. The abrupt rise of PPGPP results in a great reduction in ribosomal RNA synthesis, decreasing the number of ribosomes synthesized, which in turn decreases translation. As mentioned earlier, riboswitch RNA also regulates bacterial translation. The binding of mRNA's riboswitch to its appropriate ligand can result in the blockage of ribosome binding site, which inhibits translation. Finally, several small RNAs, abbreviated as sRNAs, can regulate translation. DSRA and RPRA promotes translation by pairing with one strand of a stem loop structure that otherwise blocks the ribosome binding site, whereas OxyS blocks translation by pairing with the ribosome binding site. Eukaryotic translation is regulated in four ways. Translational initiation factors are subject to phosphorylation by protein kinases. The phosphorylated forms are often less active and cause a general depression in translation in the cell. Some proteins bind directly to mRNA and act as translational repressors, and many bind specific sites in the 3' untranslated region to prevent translational initiation. Some binding proteins also disrupt eukaryotic initiation factor 4E and 4G interaction. These proteins are in turn inactivated by growth factor. Lastly, microRNAs that are only partially complementary to the target mRNA blocks its translation. The last stage of gene regulation involves post-translational processing, which I covered in my previous video. Bacterial proteins undergo two main types of amino acid modification, including phosphorylation of serine threonine, histidine aspartate, and formulation of methionine, which serves as the first amino acid during translation. Bacterial protein structural changes include loss of N-terminus signal sequence after elongating polypeptide has been directed to the membrane, as well as disulfide crosslink between cysteine residue. Bacterial protein targeting involves SEC-A, SEC-B, and SEC-YG translocation complex. Bacterial proteins are also degraded by ATP-dependent long protease. Eukaryotic polypeptide undergoes more types of amino acid modifications, including lipidation, phosphorylation, iodination, ubiquitination, Gamma carboxylation, glycosylation, hydroxylation, acetylation, methylation, and ADB ribosylation. Eukaryotic protein structural changes include the addition of prosthetic cofactors, proteolytic cleavage, the loss of N terminus signal sequence, and the formation of disulfide crosslinks. Eukaryotic polypeptide synthesis always begins in the cytosolic free ribosome. The N terminus signal sequence directs eukaryotic ribosome co translationally to the rough endoplasmic reticulum, which is facilitated by the peptide translocation complex, abbreviated as PTC. Protein targeting to other destinations involves other signal sequences, including nuclear localization sequence directed to nucleus. PTS or peroxisomal targeting signal directed to peroxisome and pre-sequences or mitochondrial targeting signal directed to mitochondria. Golgi apparatus attaches mannose-6-phosphate for proteins destined to be degraded by lysosome. Another mechanism of protein degradation involves ubiquitin-dependent proteolysis, in which the 26S proteasome recognizes and degrades polyubiquitinated proteins.